Hey everybody, it's Party Elite, and today we're taking a look at an extremely interesting upcoming strategy survival blend, Above Snakes. Set in the American Wild West, Above Snakes is a game that pushes everything from crafting to exploration to combat in a fresh package as you explore an unforgiving landscape filled with unique opportunities and challenges alike. If you like what you see today, don't hesitate to check out the links in the description down below for more information on the game, and don't forget to add the game to your wishlist on Steam. I say it all the time for indie games especially, it really helps them with visibility. With an alpha planned for March of this year, the game's not too far away from being playable in an early form, and with said alpha on hand, thanks to the developers providing me with a key, let's dive on in to Above Snakes. The Setting The frontier and Wild West was a dangerous time and place, and Above Snakes puts you in charge of exploring said frontier amidst a zombie apocalypse, which can only serve to make it all the more dangerous. Set in 1883 around the ominously named Corpse Creek, you play as an adventurer around the time of a strange incident where Corpse hmm. Creek was bombarded by meteors that killed countless. The survivors buried the dead, but upon the completion of their last rites, it turned out they weren't dead after all. Though the people of Corpse Creek armed themselves to fight off the rising dead, they were unable to pull the proverbial trigger against the recently lost loved ones, against these so-called lost souls. And thus, the zombie apocalypse began. As a survival game, your being in an unexplored and unknown territory works great, not just as a way to bring that threat to your doorstep, but also in how it manifests as gameplay mechanics. As an explorer-adventurer, your lack of complex tools to start with sets the tone, and the idea of building a home in the frontier isn't out of place either. A home where you can tan hides, farm food, or craft shotguns with which to protect yourself. As you venture out, you'll come across great scenes that are reminiscent of the setting, from abandoned trains to iconic misas to mines and small towns and more. The survival elements will constantly push you towards certain directions, and it won't be long before a lack of food, water, mental health, or rest will drive you to make a decision that'll have unexpected consequences down the line, ideal or otherwise. And of course, as you're doing all this traversal, zombies of different kinds will amble, run, or spit acid towards you, while wild animals might be out there seeking an easy meal for themselves. Above Snakes does a beautiful job in bringing the setting to life in its unique art style, but, like I was saying earlier, it does an even better job in marrying the setting with its game mechanics. A fresh take on exploration. World building, you could call it, since that's kind of what you're doing. I know it's rather cliche to say that no two playthroughs are alike, but Above Snakes' roguelike approach to exploration is a great start towards an accurate representation of that cliche. When you start your playthrough, and when you wipe your save to start a new playthrough from scratch, you begin with absolutely nothing to your name. A tile with some trees, some stone, and some berry bushes will serve as your base, the only constant should you die. And from this base tile, you'll need to collect resources with which to explore adjacent tiles. Typically, this will cost just some wood and stone, easily acquired by cutting down trees or mining rocks, but at times they'll require more complex resources, like glass, which will ask you to build a furnace back at home, where you can process stone into glass, with which you can then explore said tile. Exploration and crafting, which we'll touch more on in just a bit, go hand in hand as such, and as you push further away from your home tile, these asks will elevate, and as the dangers escalate, so too will your need to plan ahead and strategize your approach. When you explore a new tile, you'll have the choice between a few different ways to fill it, each with their own potential rewards and benefits, even if they're the same type of tile. So for example, if you have the option between three separate pine forests, one might provide you with more food, one might provide you with more water, one might provide you with more loot. Occasionally, if the tile you're exploring exists in a unique space for some reason or another, you might just have a single option instead, one you might want to hold off on or rush depending on your circumstances. Zooming out to a larger view of the world, you can see that these tile choices aren't entirely random. The empty spaces are color-coded to indicate what you're more or less likely to get to fill the space, and some spaces are marked as points of interest, or the starting point of quests that'll send you seeking out certain items or specific tiles with specific actions you can take therein. 
The further you get from your central tile, the more challenging the newly explored tiles will be too, but the rewards they provide will be greater to match the increased risk. So, do you explore deep in one direction to make the other direction is a cakewalk? Do you push out evenly to make sure you have easy access to your basic needs in every direction? Do you actively seek out specific biomes to prioritize certain needs? Each approach has its pros and cons, and as you weigh your current needs against your current inventory and your future needs, you'll have to choose between pushing on, returning home, or hoping luck's on your side. But hey, there's nothing like prepping ahead, right? Crafting and cooking. As you might imagine, a survival game with resources being readily available is bound to have crafting as a core mechanic, and Above Snakes is no different in that regard, though it does try to introduce an interesting way to gate your progression, and it definitely allows you to fail along the way. My personal favorite part, a game that can make failure fun always gets a plus one in my books. You need to make sure you have access to water, food, and a place to rest, and you need to maintain your mental health as well as your overall level of fatigue. If any of these drop too low, you'll start to hurt yourself and eventually die. Without crafting or cooking, you can acquire minimal amounts of sustenance as far as food and water are concerned, barely hanging on, and the right tile or two can definitely provide you with a spot to rest or sleep, but for longer journeys filled with uncertainty, you'll need to prep ahead. Crafting starts simply enough. You'll want to acquire enough twigs and wood to make tools, a crafting table, and a home for yourself, a home that is entirely customizable in its layout, number of floors, and even decorative elements. You'll be crafting a bed for this home pretty early on, a place to rest and refill your rest need, but it won't be long before you're investing in additional types of crafting tables, whether you're working with ores from the ground or leathers and other kinds of fabrics or food and more besides. The game in its current state has a hundred items and each one requires a specific set of ingredients in specific quantities while many, if not most, require you to hit various milestones to learn them in the first place. I personally would have loved a puzzle aspect to this whole side of things, but the game can be challenging enough as it is, so uh, it's fine for it to not have that puzzle aspect. With that said, there is an undeniable joy in sort of coming across a new type of material, contemplating how it might come in handy, or seeing unique ways in which it can be used, and then actually unlocking those new recipes and the new blueprints to see how these, yeah, various parts come together, and how they might help or hinder or, you know, support in one way while harm in another, it's great. The, the process of discovering new craftable items is a key aspect of these games, in my opinion, and when you pick your first tobacco leaf and hand roll your first cigar to ease your mind, there's just that moment of curiosity. You know, what else is out there? What else are you going to find? How else will the game sort of engage you and, and surprise you? Surprise and delight, as I like to put it, is a very important aspect of games that involve exploration, which of course, Above Snakes rely heavily on. So, so what else is there? Well, there's um, tea, right, of, of a few different kinds. There's pie, there's bone meal for plant fertilizer for when you eventually find seeds to plant, uh, tents for sleeping under, healing salves, and like I said earlier, hundreds of items in total. And I don't want to spoil them all, just some of the earlier ones you're very likely to come across. And what's more, some of these items have caveats, like how food lying around can attract wildlife, or how tents can get stolen if you leave them alone for too long. Your carefully planned and prepared sources of nourishment or rest might be gone if you don't maintain them properly. And like these items, you'll find your progress across other aspects just as fleeting at times. Life after death. Whether it's the various kinds of zombies bringing about your demise, or your misconceived notion that you can make it with how hungry or thirsty you currently are, you will die at times, especially early on in a playthrough. When this happens, you don't get thrown back to square one though. Well. Okay, literally you do get thrown back to your first tile, but you hold on to all the recipes you learned, all the items you'd crafted, and everything you built within that first tile, as well as any quests you might currently have active. Everything else, though, gets a reset. Not only are the tiles adjacent to you now once more unexplored, but they're different from the ones in your previous run. No matter which direction you go in, you will find different options, each with different levels of potential reward and risk, and again, you find yourself challenged by the uncertainty of the frontier, tying the setting and gameplay mechanics beautifully together. 
Naturally, with better equipment on hand, you'll be able to go farther and farther every time, but that gameplay loop makes for a very fun setup, and again, as I mentioned earlier, a step towards the idea that no two playthroughs will be alike. You can always wipe your save and start from absolutely nothing all over again, or you can keep pushing yourself further and further to explore what the Wild West has to offer, from food to tools to quests and stories. I learned my lesson quickly with regards to what I can or can't take on, and what kind of needs are more urgent than others, and I started strategizing my approach accordingly, ensuring I established rest stops or left sources of water untouched in case of emergencies. This kind of planning is where the strategic touchpoints lie, as your exploration and expansion choices are really a matter of resource management, and you'll go back and adjust your strategies as you learn your limitations and new ways to approach them. A game like this always benefits from more. Across multiple life-death loops, you'll come across the hundred or so items, the fifteen different world tiles, the handful of quests and characters pretty quickly. But that's exactly what comes next. The Road Ahead A very small dev team is behind yet another inventive game. Honestly, the indie scene has been the future of my favorite genres for a while, and the folks behind Above Snakes are continuing that trend. Being a small dev team naturally comes with its limitations, and though Above Snakes currently exists in a very playable and enjoyable form, for which I would happily part with my money, the developers want the game to be, and I quote, the best version of Above Snakes that is financially possible. You'll find in the description below a link to the game's Kickstarter, almost entirely funded at the time of this recording already, and with a playable alpha ready for access by March. You'll find me pretty hesitant to recommend Kickstarter games, and I do understand the just general hesitation in the greater gaming community as well. I've been bitten many times by Kickstarters and Indiegogos, but Kickstarter is still the source of some great gems, and Above Snakes is looking exactly like that. The devs seem dedicated, they have a working product, and they're just trying to make it the best it can be focusing on adding more items, more characters, more quests, and just more. I'll be backing the project myself to put my money where my mouth is, but if backing Kickstarter games is not for you, like I said earlier, don't hesitate to check the game out on Steam and put it on your wish list if you're interested in keeping up with it until it finally releases. That kind of exposure really helps indie devs out, and I do believe this is one to keep an eye on as one of those games that you can come back to time and time again for a couple of quick runs. If you're familiar with this channel, you know I'm a fan of games like FTL Faster Than Light and Into the Breach, games with really interesting mechanics and systems that don't ask you to sit and play for 40 hours or 500 hours to complete them. Games that you can come back to and pick right up and keep playing until before you know it, you have clocked hundreds of hours over multiple play sessions. If you're curious about the game, don't hesitate to ask any questions down below in the comments, and I'd love to hear your thoughts based on what you've seen here today, and on their rather well-designed and quite informative Kickstarter page as well. You can check links related to the game out in the description down below, and if you'd like to keep up with more of these kinds of games through reviews, previews, let's plays, guides, and more, don't hesitate to hit that subscribe button. As always, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big ol' thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time, cheers.